This is a Hot Pie Media original. Tom Brady's 600th touchdown pass, the ball, the game ball, is a documentary all onto itself. It really is. The story of the ball is hilarious. You don't have to be a football fan to follow the story of the ball. The story of the ball has become a much bigger story in a variety of ways, by the way, including talking about selling his wife. So it's like taking on this whole weird thing. But the ball itself is, is a much bigger story than his 600th touchdown pass. I think we're numb to Tom Brady records. Well, okay, no, yeah, okay. Got it. You're great. You're great. You're great. Keep it up. But the ball story is remarkable. I don't know. So Tom Brady sets an NFL record again for his 600th touchdown pass. Got it. Um, it, we don't. Have, we don't have to talk about the greatness of Brady and first ballot Hall of Fame and the best of all time. Forget that argument. The documentary is about the ball. I don't know how the ball ended up in the stands. I don't know. I guess the receiver, and I'm not sure who caught the 600th pass, I think tossed it up in the crowd. Guy catches it. I don't know how long it took before the guy that caught it, he drops his Bud Light and says, thanks. I don't know how long it took before somebody said, you know what? That's ball right there you're holding on to. You just spilled some Bud Light on it. That's the 600th touchdown pass, that's kind of a big deal. No, that's a really big deal. So this guy in Tampa gets the ball. Well, then the circus starts. Of course, a lot of people want the ball, including Tom Brady. Now, you can start to think for yourself. You're sitting there sucking down Bud Lights, enjoying the game, and the ball lands in your lap. You can decide what you would do with it for the next 24 hours, which is the documentary that needs to be made. So here's what happens. His name is Byron Kennedy. Byron has the ball. Byron hung on to the ball. I don't know how many fights Byron got into with that ball, but I'd protect that thing <laughs> like, like you're holding a million dollars because, well, you're holding a million dollars. So then this guy, I mean, really, I think it's a funny documentary. So the guy has the ball and... What do you think he should do? What should happen with it? Well, Brady, um, I guess, wants to keep the Tom Brady Museum going. Brady wants the ball. You know, I mean, I know people would say, well, who cares about the gamble? But you want the original ball. I mean, if you're going to have a museum, you want the real thing. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. The Tom Brady Museum uh, costs uh, $3 on Sunday, opens at noon, and uh, the rest of the week, kids get in free. So the Tom Brady Museum is going to be extra cool when all the real stuff happens. Think about his career. Not long ago, remember the guy who stole his shirt, his jersey? That became a fascinating documentary. How the feds tracked the guy down in Mexico. Because we're not just talking about stealing football stuff. We're talking about stealing museum stuff. We're talking about a jersey worth half a million dollars, if not more, that was stolen. And there is a documentary about it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> they tracked the guy down. <laughs> he had a fake press credential. But now we're talking about the, another piece of the museum. The football. The real thing. So Byron Kennedy gets it. Somebody tosses him the ball, which you know is a whole discussion by itself. Excuse me. Hey, Mike, where's the ball? I threw it up there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> no, it's not cool. It's worth a million dollars, and I want it back. So Byron... Kennedy gets the ball. Brady, of course, I get another chance to plug the Manning show, the Manning Brothers show. It makes sense now while Peyton Manning was wearing a, a, a New England Patriots jersey. So Brady goes on the hilarious show, the Manning Brothers. I call it that. This is their Monday night show. Not only do they have Marshawn Lynch on there, who's the Snoop Dogg of football, they've got Tom Brady on there talking about the 600th ball. Not talking about the game that's going on. Not talking about the pass itself. Talking about the ball. And he makes a great point. I don't know if Byron Kennedy is saying, damn it, Tom's right. I should have held out. Get the ball back. Trying to get that ball. 
We got it back. So I got it back. Yeah. There's a lot of Where negotiation is it? Is it in, in order is it in to get Can- the ball is back. It in Can- is, it, is the ball in Canton or have you made it into an NFT? Talk about what, what the ball is. <laughs> it's it's short, shortly an NFT. You can autograph dot, autograph.io. You can go there to bid on it. Uh, there's a lot of great things, auction items, memorabilia. And there's my boy, Tim, negotiating with Byron, who gave to me. Byron realized he lost all of his leverage once he gave the ball away. He should have held it yeah. and then just get as a, much leverage as possible. Amateur move. <laughs> yeah. Amateur move. Yeah. So, if he would have held it, he would have been sitting in the Tom Brady suite for the rest of the season. But uh, <laughs> amateur move on his part. Hey, it, I think it worked out pretty well. It just showed kind of what he got right there from it. But I'm also giving him a Bitcoin, which, I mean, that's pretty cool, too. So at the end of the day, I think hey. he's still. Okay. First of all, Peyton Manning is funny. Amateur move. Okay, here's what he got. So there, so Brady sends over. I don't know if Brady is a goon. It's his agent. I don't know who it is, but they know we're not talking about real money here. That thing is worth a lot of money. So this guy goes over. That's when you hear him say, my man, Tim. Tim goes over. And I don't know, Tim Tim offered him. I'm sure Brady said, you go get him. Give, tell him we'll give him whatever. His man, Tim, goes over to Byron. Byron, of course, maybe about five or six Coors Lights in. He tosses the ball back. Thank you, bud. We'll fix you up later. Okay, and that's why Peyton Manning said amateur move. Don't invest when you're drunk, kids. Don't invest when you're drunk. It's not a good time. You need to say to you should say to Tim, Tim, I got a wicked buzz right now. I'm not thinking clearly. I'm worked up in the game. G- give me a couple days to figure this out. I'm going to take this ball. Now I don't know if Brady would have said, "Get the goons, get them, get my ball back now." So the guy tosses the ball back down to Tim. Tim, guy, I guess, who follows Tom Brady around doing stuff like this, says, okay, we'll fix you up. So here's what Byron got out of it. This is why this is why Peyton Manning had the vicious comment, amateur move. The ball on that day alone, okay, the ball on that day by most collectors was valued at $500,000 that day. Now, Brady's argument is, buddy, every day you hold on, it's more. So it's 500000 at the end of that game. How much did Byron get? Well, he got a Bitcoin. Brady gave him a Bitcoin. That on that day is $63,000. Um, by the way, here's the, here's the comment from, a, uh, from collectible expert Ezra Levine. He says the, vol, the ball easily is worth $500,000, but the value probably as we stand here today, this is two days later, is probably closer to $750,000. What did I say, kids? Do not invest when you're drunk. I mean, I don't know what his buddies are saying. Give it back, give it back. Well, wait a minute. Doesn't anyone in that section, doesn't anyone in that section, there's a lot of people around that guy. Hey, everybody, I got to talk to you. It's like price is right. Help me out, everybody. Help me out. What do I do? What do I do? Okay, hang on to it. Okay, sell it. Give it back to Tim. So it's like this whole circus is going on. This negotiation is going on during the game. A guy on the field with old Byron there pounding cocktails in a straw hat. He needed to ask the crowd, is there any investment experts over here right now? we got to talk. John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce, now in all 50 states and several retail outlets as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to let this social media rock star chef uh, walk us through Four different sauces, and then I'll taste, and we'll tell everyone why they should buy. You can give the science behind yeah. these, and then I'll make the uh, the simple recommendation. Go to atxhotsauce.com. All right, so let's go. I don't so think everybody's go. heard the website yeah, I know, before I know. by you, Jeff. <laughs> I've but never that, heard yeah, that. It is atxhotsauce.com. I'll say 345 right. times, atxhotsauce.com. So let's do it. Uh, I brought four flavors here, and we're going to test your palate today. Okay. And I only brought four because I didn't think you could handle five or six. Yes, probably a smart move. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so the first one we're going to try here, it's called Beet Heat. And just like the name implies, Beet, beet, it has beets in it. It's made with red Fresno peppers. Red Fresnos are uh, red peppers that are, uh, they're hotter than a jalapeno and a little bit less than a serrano. So not super hot here. uh, Just a lot of really good flavor. So we're going to start with this one and then we're going to move up the chain. I've had the beet heat, but okay. Yeah, we're going to try it though. It goes well, it goes well with a cab. All right, Jeff's savoring beet I'll even do it with you, so that should be all right. Now, remember, it is hot sauce. 
Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's hot sauce. Trust me, man. Wait, it's hot sauce. Is that one hot to you? Um, no, no, no. A little. Yeah. The, the, no. the great thing with the fermentation process is you get a bunch of the flavor right up front. Yeah. And then the heat comes, but then it dissipates pretty quickly, especially with the red Fresnos. You know, this is not a very spicy uh, one, but it is um, a very tasty one. Goes on great on sandwiches. Beet heat. Beet heat. B E E T heat. All right. Go to ATXHotSauce.com. That's right. I'll give you 8%. He tosses the ball back. Brady then promises him a Bitcoin, 63000 The Buccaneers pledge $1,000 in credit <laughs> at the team store. So he gets like a little snow globe and a Tom Brady bobblehead. Okay? So he gets a Bitcoin. He gets $1,000 in credit at the team store. Two autographed Tom Brady jerseys a Brady helmet, an autographed Mike Evans jersey. Mike Evans is the guy who caught the touchdown pass. Mike needs to, somebody needs to talk to Mike. Mike, please stop throwing the balls that I throw to you into the stands. Okay? It's worth a lot. You like toss the Mona Lisa of football up into the crowd to a drunk guy. So let's not do that anymore. <laughs> it's just like this, these characters and we're not even done yet. All right, so this is what the guy gets. And he gets the, uh, also gets an autographed Mike Evans jersey. Evans game-worn cleats. Eh, and two season tickets for the rest of the season and next. That's a pretty good day for the guy who's done nothing but pound light beer all day, right? It's not quite $750,000 that he was holding on to. But he's a rock star today. So that's how the transaction over, gosh, that all happened within about a three-hour period. There's that part of the documentary. Then, <laughs> then we got to debate what Tony Romo said. So there's this whole discussion about, think about if you're that guy. And I know it's easy because you're not drunk, you're not sweaty, you're not a bunch of fans hanging around you. So you know it's hard to put yourself in, in Byron's spot. But think about what you do if you're just sitting there and the ball lands in your lap. And you got a goon coming over saying, we'll, we'll pay you for it. Then you've got this other issue that's blown up. I think it's ridiculous. I do. But you can understand some of the criticism. So the game is going on. The Buccaneers and Brady are blowing out the Bears. Not that surprising. So the game is, the game is completely over. It's nondescript. It's irrelevant. So now the broadcast crew of Jim Nance... And Tony Romo, and Tony Romo's great at what he does, but he's getting a little too excited. Something's happening here. He's got to settle down. So Tony Romo, trying to make the game better, trying to make the thing more interesting, they're filming live this transaction going on between Brady's guy, Tim, the goon, and old Byron there, who is holding the ball out, okay? And Byron is surrounded by a bunch of fat guys who are screaming at him. So then, as this is going on, here comes Jim Nance and Tony Romo, and that led to the real controversy about what Romo said. Negotiations in NFL history. <laughs> right here, he's like, we need that ball. That's 600. What? Really? So what do you want? A million? No. Oh, no a day with this, Giselle. A day with on. Giselle, and I'm in. Tom? Okay, Tom will do it. No love it. One time. You got it. Hang on. Wait. It was funny. He had a tell us straight out. He's circling the negotiation going on. Did you hear what he said? In case you're absolutely clueless and have been under a rock for the past 10 years, Giselle is, Tom Brady is Mr. Giselle. Giselle is a former Victoria's Secret model. Giselle's made a lot of money herself. Giselle's stunning, obviously. Uh, listen to what listen to what happened, and then it blows up. Negotiations in NFL history. <laughs> right, right here, he's like, "We need that ball. That's six hundred. What? Really? So, what do you want? A million? No. Oh, no a day with this, Giselle. This a day on. with Giselle, and I'm in. Tom. Okay, Tom will do it. No love. It. One time, you got it. Oof. What was the movie? Demi Moore. Was it Demi Moore? Yeah, Robert Redford. That's what Tony's saying, and. He's getting ripped. It's been a while. I don't want to know the last time that he's been ripped, but here you go. This is not, it's not been taken well. 
Tony Romo's crew. I mean, this is everywhere now. Tony Tony Romo's crew Giselle Bunchen quip is problematic beyond tarnishing Tom Brady's historic moment. Um, a lot of people are mad because he made the suggestion here. Give me the ball back and get have her for a night. I think old Byron would have taken that. I don't think Byron would have lasted very long. I think he might just fall over. I think Byron's really buzzing. I don't think there would be much sex. But that's what Tony Romo joked about. Jim Nance laughed. And now people, in particular female reporters, are pissed. Come on. I mean, really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> It's only this could turn into 2021. Really? You can be mad if you want. We can debate. I, I don't know that Tom Brady's mad. I don't know that Giselle's mad. I'm pretty certain old Byron there is never going to get near Giselle in her underwear. Okay? I don't think it's going to happen. I think everyone's going to laugh it off. I could be wrong. But here's the way this story is now playing out. Giselle Bunchen is an incredibly accomplished woman in many parts of the world. She is more well-known and recognizable than her husband. She is a stalwart environmentalist, an activist for numerous other causes, a best-selling author, businesswoman, and mother. She also modeled in her underwear. Take it easy. Settle down. She's not Mother Teresa. She made her money looking hot. I'm not saying she's not an environmentalist. I'm not saying she's not an activist. I'm not saying she's not an author and she made a ton of money. All that is true. She may be a rocket scientist for all I know, but she made her money in underwear. Settle down. But in an instant on Sunday, she was reduced to a piece of property that should be passed around like a bowl of Halloween candy, a piece of memorabilia. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Maybe a lot of you think the same. I mean, uh, I mean if, you bi if you break it down, if you work really, really hard during a football game and you really, really want to find that this is such a crude, horrible thing, then I guess you could take it that way. I guess you could take it very seriously. Munchen's husband is Tom Brady. As everyone knows at this point, on Sunday against the Chicago Bears, Brady did an amazing thing. This is written like a third grader. He became the first quarterback in the 101-year history of the NFL to throw 600 touchdown passes in the regular season. It's a record that seems inevitable when you've enjoyed the incredible run of success Brady's had over 20 seasons. All right. Mike Evans caught the 600th touchdown ball, was unaware of the moment, and threw the ball into the crowd. A brief negotiation with a Buccaneers official, Byron Kennedy, the 29-year-old fan who got the ball, handed it back. As if it weren't enough, after hearing details from sideline reporter Tracy Wolfson on what Kennedy agreed to before handing the ball back, remember they covered this whole thing, this transaction went down on, no one cares about the game. The only thing that anyone cared about was, and I tell you what, Brady's person was smart. He seized the moment, and he got that ball back. Because I tell you what, Byron runs off with his frat brothers, and that ball gets really expensive really quickly. So then Romo makes the joke, a date with Giselle, a date with Giselle, and I'm in. Okay, Tom will do it. One time, you got it. Because, of course, Brady would pimp out his wife of 12 years to a stranger for the all-important prize of a piece of cowhide. I mean, it's football and it's family, so what's the big deal with handing family over in exchange for a little memorabilia, right? Oh, boy. To be clear, Bunchen's achievements aren't the reason why it's offensive. Every woman, no matter her net worth or amount of fame, has agency and is not her significant other's chattel, no matter how many Super Bowls she has won. It was all so unseemly and crude, the implication that Brady owns his wife and would offer her up in such a way. All right, how do you want to take that? You want to be mad? I'm a guy, I'm not finding it, but maybe you want to be mad. Maybe you want to break this down to that level and be really mad about it. That's what I'm telling you. This thing is a documentary all by itself because you can start the clock now. And I don't know. I mean, uh, if she comes back, how about if that's just between... What, what is Giselle Bunchen supposed to say today? Lighten up? Back off Tony's case? I don't know that Tony Romo's apologized yet, but it's blowing up enough where he's probably going to be stuck in a place where he needs to apologize. And I think it's BS. She's a famous model, okay? Sorry? It was a joke? 
It was a joke. But now this thing is blown up. From the Hot Pie Media Studios in Austin, Texas, it's the Jeff Ward Show. Listen at jeffwardshow.com.